One of the central figures in this unfolding Twitter files drama is a man by the name of James Baker. No, not the former White House Chief of Staff and Secretary of State. He's retired. But you'd be forgiven for confusing them because the James Baker just fired from Twitter yesterday is also another Beltway power player. The James Baker everyone is talking about joined the Department of Justice as a lawyer in 1990. He spent most of his career there, eventually becoming the top FBI lawyer in charge of surveillance requests. He testified to Congress in support of the Patriot Act and its massive expansion of the powers of the security state. During his ascent, Baker took a two-year hiatus to serve as associate general counsel at Bridgewater Associates, a top hedge fund. In 2014, he returned to the DOJ, this time as general counsel, top lawyer of the FBI. That, of course, put him right in the thick of the FBI's Russiagate investigation, which we now know was a fanciful political vendetta with no evidentiary basis, but plenty of anti-Russia hysteria behind it. Remember, as former FBI Director Robert Mueller himself concluded, after an 18-month investigation driven by a team of highly aggressive prosecutors with unlimited funds and full subpoena power, quote, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. James Baker himself got investigated, too, for allegedly leaking unauthorized information to the press. Although that investigation ended without charges, Baker abruptly was reassigned anyway. Sources told the Washington Post at the time that this move was unrelated. But anonymous sources say a lot of things. That's one of the great things about getting to disseminate claims to the public while hiding behind anonymity. So soon after defending the Patriot Act, overseeing surveillance during the war on terror, and being investigated for politically driven leaks, in being centrally linked to the Russiagate and to the top years of Democratic Party politics, James Baker left one of the most important legal jobs in the U.S. security state in 2018. Where did he go? The Brookings Institution, the decades-old venerable liberal D.C. think tank that became ground zero for some of the most deranged and fanatical Trump-era Russiagate conspiracy theories. And then in 2020, Baker joined another center of power run by establishment Democrats. He joined Twitter as deputy general counsel. James Baker's resume makes one thing quite clear. He is not vulnerable or marginalized. He's a highly successful lawyer who's had many well-paid high-status jobs. But it's not just that. James Baker has also been given a huge amount of public power and trust. We trusted him to make the case for who our government should be allowed to spy on. We trusted him to safely use radically expanded powers under the Patriot Act. And in his move to the private sector, we trusted him with substantial influence at one of the nation's most powerful corporations, Twitter, with the power to magnify or censor major news stories and political opinions at will. Keep all that in mind, because as of today, among the luminaries of left liberal corporate media, James Baker isn't a powerful person given enormous status and trust. No, now he's a victim. On Friday night, we broadcast a one-hour live program examining independent journalist Matt Taibbi's revelations based on the Twitter files. From that reporting, we learned that Baker was directly involved in the discussion about censoring reporting on Joe Biden's business activities in China and Ukraine right before the election, reporting that came from the documents found on Hunter Biden's laptop. In those files published by Taibbi, we see Baker say that, quote, it's reasonable for us to assume that Hunter's laptop may have been hacked and that caution is warranted. So we admitted they didn't have proof. He just said they should assume it was hacked and then just wait for the New York Post to prove a negative. And that baseless assumption that these documents were hacked by the Russians, spread by the CIA and their partners in corporate media, but which we now know was categorically false, became the excuse for Twitter to censor that story right before the election, citing its rule against promoting, quote, hacked materials. Yesterday, Taibbi revealed more. On Tuesday afternoon, he tweeted, quote, On Friday, the first installment of the Twitter files was published here. 
We expected to publish more over the weekend. Many wondered why there was a delay. We can now tell you part of the reason why. On Tuesday, Twitter Deputy General Counsel and former FBI General Counsel Jim Baker was fired. Among the reasons? Vetting the first batch of Twitter files without knowledge of new management. Now, as Taibbi says, Baker is a controversial figure. He's been something of a zealot of FBI controversies dating back to 2016, from the Steele dossier to the Alpha server bank mess. He resigned in 2018 after an investigation into leaks to the press. The news that Baker was reviewing the Twitter files surprised everyone involved, to say the least. New Twitter chief Elon Musk acted quickly to, quote, exit Baker on Tuesday. A small update, but it caused a meltdown among the press and Twitterati who posted all their outrage on Twitter because, need we remind you, they are completely addicted to it. In response to Matt Taibbi's new update, Mother Jones' senior reporter Dan Friedman rose in valiant defense of the former FBI operative. Quote, Jim Baker was involved in various controversies because he was the FBI's general counsel. Is he, quote, something of a zealot or just a guy with a tough job? Mother Jones Magazine, where Jim Baker's defender works, is named after a founder, a co-founder of Industrial Workers of the World, a communist and anarchist trade union who was imprisoned under martial law for helping striker, striking workers. Now, the reporters who work at a magazine named after her, white, her, after her, Mother Jones, white knight for senior FBI operatives and highly paid corporate executives who burrow into social media's most powerful censorship nodes. And he wasn't the only one. NBC News' lead censorship advocate and so-called disinformation reporter, Ben Collins, was even more outraged. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after-show Q&As, and more.